Well, hello guys and welcome back to Electro Horde. Today I want to show you a very detailed video on how to get this old vintage IBM XT clones or even the real IBM XTs to boot from a USB flash drive. This is the ISA card we're going to use today. You can get this pretty cheap on eBay. I'll talk about it uh, later in the video. And the main goal here is to get this board on the PC and not only get it to recognize USB flashcards, but also get it to boot from a USB flashcard, right? So guys, this is the computer I'm using today. It's a, a, an IBM XT clone and I, it has, it's got two uh, uh, floppy drives. Uh, those five and a quarter inch floppy drives uh, that uses this kind of this type of floppies and it's got uh, it has no uh, hard drive it has a VGA card it used to have a CGA card this is the card that was installed in it before but it's only got CGA output so uh, I have uh, upgraded the BIOS from this computer. I'm running the Super XC BIOS version 2.6. And that's why I have this here. This is the, the original BIOS that came with the motherboard. I just kept it here in case I just wanna revert it back into original state someday. And I'm not talking about upgrading the BIOS on this computer. This is not something you need to do to get it to work with a, a USB flash drive. I just did it because I wanted it to have the, a CGA card and this BIOS would not uh, accept this card, would not, it was not compatible with, with this card. And this is a CGA and a VGA card. So the good point is that I can have both in this card so I can either, even, so I can either have a CGA or a VGA a monitor attached while the old BIOS would only work with this old CGA card, right? So uh, I also have here, uh, this is a very interesting uh, adapter. This is for the keyboard. So uh, you can use regular AT keyboards. You can have here, you can see here that I have a, a, an AT keyboard connected. I'm also not talking on this video about this project, but you can find it online. It's called AT to XT. So you can use regular AT keyboards uh, with your XT class machine, right? So before we start, uh, back in the day, you would boot these machines either from a floppy drive, from a floppy disk. You would have two floppy drives like this machine. Uh, one of the drives would be for the OS, uh, for DOS, uh, for instance, and the other, oh, the other floppy drive, you would have a, a, a disket, a floppy in it, uh, like this one, running your software or your, your, your program that you wanted to run on your OS. But floppies were already unreliable when, we, when they were brand new. So imagine nowadays using this 40 years old floppy. I still have sealed boxes of floppies like this one, but since they were reliable when they were new, imagine now. So I don't like having to boot this vintage computers from floppies every time I want to use them. This floppy that I have in my hands right now has failed on me. Uh, it was working yesterday. Now it developed a lot of bad sectors and I had to, to create uh, a new floppy. This is the new bootable floppy for this computer. So just have to throw this one in the trash and this happens a lot with the sold floppies. And back in the day you would either boot from floppy or you would have a hard disk like this one. This is a very common hard disk, hard disk from back in the day, the, the ST238. And this drives are very, very, very unreliable. This one still works but it will fail sometime, I know it will. Uh, they, one interesting fact is that they used to come with these stickers and listed here, the factory would list all the bad sectors in the drive and you would have to manually enter these bad sectors so the drive wouldn't use those sectors. Uh, 
Well, hard drives do come with bad sectors, it's really common, but modern hard drives just manage this list automatically, so you don't have to type anything. And so you, you would either have a hard drive like this or boot from a floppy. These hard drives, they were reliable back in the day, but nowadays they're not reliable at all. Uh, most of them have failed already, and, if, and, if, and the ones that haven't will do so uh, in a short period of time. So, today we have several different ways to boot uh, this, this vintage XT class machines. The most common way to boot them is using an IX, uh, IDE XT card, uh, for instance like this one. This is one I have, it's the XT IDE version 4 and it just adds IDE, it has an, a, a, a ROM here, an expansion ROM that just enables you to boot from, from an IDE uh, drive or from an IDE floppy from one of these DOM modules which are just uh, solid state and you could also use an adapter and use them with compact flashcards like this one. So this is a very easy way to boot but the bad thing about this in my opinion is that you either have to have uh, an external bracket and a cable so you can have the the compact flash card for instance on the back of the of the computer so you could actually remove it anytime you want to anytime you want to get this uh, into a modern machine and have it read on a USB reader like this one to update and to exchange files between such a old PC and a modern machine. And I don't think it's very, it's the most practical way to do it. So the other way that we can do it, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this video, is having an ISA to USB card like this one. As I said, this is based on the CH375 uh, IC. Uh, you can find them on eBay, they are pretty cheap, they are 8-bit ISA and you can either have this as external storage for your XT machine, that's pretty easy, comes with a driver, you just plug it in the slot, add the driver to your configs file and it works, but you can also use it to boot your XT machine, but I've been searching how to do it for a long time, I had a lot of work to get this to to finally work so that's why I'm making this video to make everything much much easier for you guys if you want to do that and this is done by using the optional room just like we we have here on the IXT card and we are using this optional room we're gonna install a new EEPROM here we're gonna flash it we're gonna program it we're gonna install it here and we will have this card with a bootable USB flash drive to get this machine to boot, right? So let's get started. So first thing I wanna do is just boot this machine to make sure it's working fine. It's in stock configuration. It, it's only got the, the floppy drive controller and the video card uh, installed. So we'll get it to boot using the regular bootable floppy disk, so we'll just turn it on, make sure everything works, make sure it boots just fine before we start, and then the first thing we're gonna do is to flash a new EEPROM, like I said, to get it to work on the, on the, on the ISA to USB card, and then we'll prepare a bootable USB flash drive and get it to boot. So the machine is now booting, it's reading the the floppy disk, uh, as you can see, it's starting to boot. Uh, I have a small auto exec file just to set the time, to automatically set the time on the machine from the real time clock, and that's it. Uh, it's booting just fine. So now I'll shut it off and we'll get the, the, to the interesting part. So the first thing we need to do is to get uh, this EEPROM erased, right? Uh, this is a used EEPROM. Uh, you can also use, this, is, this one is the 27C64. You can also use the, the electrically erasable PROM, which is the 28C64. I don't have 
uh, any of those in hand right now. So I'm using this one. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna erase it using a USB, uh, 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 sorry, a US, not a USB, a UV uh, eraser. So we just put it in and we'll leave it there for 20 minutes. So I have my vintage watch here and we wait for 20 minutes. Actually 15 minutes should be fine. And I'll be back in 15 minutes and we're gonna check uh, if everything's okay and we'll try to get it to program, right? I'll be back in 15 minutes. Okay, so I'm back and 15 minutes have passed already. So the, the, the EEPROM is, is probably blank right now. So let's get it out of here. Let's turn it off. And now let's get to the fun part, which is programming and, and testing stuff. So I have the a USB programmer here. You can use any kind of USB programmers. I'm using this Wylan VP290. Uh, that's the one I have, it works just fine. So we're just gonna get the EEPROM. We'll put it there. And now let's get to the software part and start programming it. Okay, so here I have the, the software for the, for the Wylan programmer. First thing we're gonna do is open up the hex file that we're, is actually a, a bin file that we're gonna have it programmed on the APROM. You can find all these files down below on the video description. Okay, don't worry. Uh, so let's open it. Let's hit okay. Now we're gonna hit program. We'll wait for the programmer to check and it just checked and the, the EEPROM is blank. So the time we left it there on the UV eraser was enough. Uh, it just finished programming, it verified, it's okay, let's verify it once again, just to make sure everything's fine. Okay, so, uh, everything's fine, it's programmed just fine. Uh, here I have the, the EEPROM out of the programmer. Uh, I'll just put a sticker here, you don't actually need these stickers. Uh, some people say that you do, because light could erase, I've never had a problem uh, of these things getting erased, but I do like uh, putting a sticker on here because then I know what's in them. Uh, this is the, the, the USB uh, bootable uh, bin version version 1.5 and I also like to use this blue 3M masking tapes because they tend to leave no residue even after years so if you have to take it off you don't have to keep scrubbing to get all the residue off so you can actually reuse this this ICs okay okay so now uh, let's get this on the board uh, let me just get out of the screensaver here on the on the computer okay so now the next step is to get this on the USB ISA flash card uh, USB ISA card and install it on the machine uh, and then we'll have to make a USB flash drive to try to get it to boot. Okay, so now let's get the, the EEPROM on the socket. Uh, you can, you need to correctly align P1 to P1, obviously. So let's just get this right. Okay, it's in, there we have it. Now let's just get the card on the PC. We'll just use this lock right here. Okay, so there it goes, it's in there, it's, Seat it correctly, and now the next step is to get a USB flash drive. I'm just I just got this USB flash drives. Yes, I know they don't have any case, but I got them like this. I just got a bunch of them for very very cheap. These are two gigabytes USB flash drives. They are just great for these vintage computers because you don't need much space. You probably won't be using more than 500 megabytes, so they are just perfect and they were dirty, dirty, dirty cheap. So that's why I got them. I use them to test everything, to try things out. They have never failed on me, believe it or not. They are very, very cheap. They seem very, very fragile, but they do work just fine, right? So now let's get back to the computer. Let's get uh, uh, this formatted. Let's get uh, MS-DOS on it, and then we'll get back to, to, to the XT and try to boot from it. 
Okay, so now we're back at the computer and all you have to do, remember that you have to create uh, 512 megabytes partition here. Uh, that's the maximum size, that's the exact size that the, the, the ISA to USB ca uh, card will recognize. So you have to create an exact size 512 megabyte partition here and then you just can have any OS you'd like installed here. Uh, I'll be putting DOS, MS-DOS 6.22 uh, here. That's what I regularly use on these vintage PCs. Sometimes I use DOS 3.30, but mostly I use 6.22. So to do this, first we're gonna get this uh, connected to the computer. And to speed things up, I already have uh, an image here that I, will, that I can write with Rufus. Uh, if you don't know Rufus, you can just download. Uh, it's a very, very useful software for, for making images and for writing images. So here I have the flash drive. I can then just select the image that I want to use. You can see here that I already have an MS-DOS 6.22 image here. And that's it. It's ready. Now I'll just hit start here and it'll start writing the image to the drive it's just giving me giving me an alert that i'll lose all the data on the usb flash drive that's not a problem that's what i want so now it started writing the image so all it's doing here right now it's writing a 512 megabytes image with ms dos 6.22 to that usb flash drive right and uh, as soon as it finishes this this USB flash drive should be good to go so we can try to to get our XC2 boot right so I'm not I'll just let it finish here I'm not uh, filming everything because it should take uh, some minutes maybe so I'll just stop here and get back when it's finished okay so we're done uh, flash drive is finished I have the 512 megabyte bootable image here so now all we have to do is get this on the back of the computer connected to the USB port like this and now just move the camera back to the front of the computer so we can see it booting for the first time okay so now I move the camera to the front of the computer let's turn it on uh, the USB flash drive is right there in the back there are no floppies here so we can actually get it to boot from the from the USB stick that we just uh, made and there we go uh, it says start ch375 version 1.5 which is the the boot code that we got in the eprom and it's starting ms dos and i also have an auto exec dot bat a batch file to set the clock this is just to automatically set the ms dos clock and there we go it's working we can have the IR here and I just typed IR instead of DIR. <laughs> Let's do it again, DIR. There we go. That's the, the C drive, which is actually the USB flash drive. That's what we have there. We only have DOS and a few drivers and the clock utility. And it's an XT machine, so it does take some time. To, to actually cal cal calculate the, the free space. So there we go, we have 505 megabytes of free space. And there we have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave on the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. And if you don't do so already, please follow the channel. I have much more interesting uh, videos in the future coming. And if you have any suggestions, please let me know too on the comments down below and thank you for watching and see you next time bye bye